Thermal chemistry is the study of energy, okay? Energy is the ability to do work or transfer heat. Okay? Now, remember, work, that's associated with movement, right? It takes work to move an object from point A to point B. It takes, therefore, it takes energy, okay? Heat, that's associated with temperature, okay? If you are going to raise the temperature of an object, you need to add heat to that object. Heat is a form of energy as well, okay? Now, um, we're going to relate this back to potential energy, okay? Potential energy, or PE, has to do with position, okay? A lady that is at the top of the hill has more potential energy than she has when she's going down the hill, okay? Kinetic energy, and I'm just reviewing these definitions, okay? I don't know what happened to my uh, Kinetic energy has to do with motion. And let's just review how we calculate kinetic energy. Raise your hand if you've taken physics. One guy. That's great. Kinetic energy, and this is, you, you might remember this from integrated science if you took it. It's one half mv squared, okay? Where m is mass and v is velocity. Now, if you know the mass and the velocity of an object, you can calculate how much kinetic energy that object has. Let's go back to potential energy. Let me give you the uh, equation for that. Potential energy has to do with the mass of the object times the force of gravity times, wow. <coughs> Mass, this is acceleration due to gravity. And then H is height, or how far off the ground something is. That's your typical, um, that's how you calculate potential energy, okay? These are just, you, you've got a, a homework problem that's gonna, gonna let you practice that, okay? Let's talk about the units of energy. The units of energy is called the joule, all right? Now, one joule is equal to one kilogram meter squared over second squared, okay? It's the force, and we'll talk about this, it's the force that you need to exert to move an object a certain distance, okay? Now, another unit that you're going to see a lot of is the calorie, okay? One calorie, that's small c, one calorie equals 4.184 joules. So a calorie is roughly four times larger than a joule. Okay? Those are these are just units that you're using to express energy. Okay? Now, one more definition for you. Okay? System and surroundings. Okay, when you talk about energy, you're talking about energy leaving or coming into a system and surroundings. The system Okay, 
It includes, okay, for chemistry, it includes the molecules that we are dealing with. Okay. Okay. So in this picture here, the system would include these molecules here. Okay. The surroundings, on the other hand, is everything else. Everything else, okay? In this picture, the surroundings would include the piston, okay? The container. It also includes the outside of the container. I like to think of it as the entire universe that is not those molecules, okay? So we're, tr we're trying to get some terms here so we can... Um, you have to isolate what is the system, what's the surroundings, if you want to uh, um, understand these, uh, these equations. Now, let's define work, okay? Work is the energy used to move, okay? Remember, we're talking about movement an object over some distance. Okay? Work equals F times D. The force that you use to, to move that object, this would be force. D is distance. Okay? Well, I think they give you on your uh, your book gives you a uh, um, couple of problems there. Okay? Heat, the important thing you need to know about heat, well, heat's pretty easy because it's just in joules. There's no, there's no equation for it. But you do, you do need to know that it flows from warmer objects to cooler objects. Okay, that's the rule. Okay, so you put a cold spatula in a hot flame, heat energy is going to go from that flame into that cold spatula automatically. That's what happens. It's kind of, I mean, you know these concepts intuitively, you've just never really thought, well, of energy as a as a uh, tangible thing that you can measure. Okay. Now, the cool thing about energy is that you can switch energy back and forth between work and heat. Okay. Now, in this case, we could go from a high potential energy and zero kinetic energy. We could go to a lower potential energy and a higher kinetic energy. Okay, this is a, you know, you'll see this type of stuff in physics, but if you're on top of a mountain, you've got high potential energy, and if you're not moving, you don't have any kinetic energy. You jump off that mountain and base jump, you just, you're turning your potential energy into kinetic energy. Okay, energy is inner convertible. Okay? Now, First law of thermodynamics, energy is neither created nor destroyed, okay? In other words, if your system loses energy, the surroundings need to gain it. 
right? That is the first law of thermodynamics. Um, and the opposite is also true. If you gain, if the system gains energy, the surroundings is going to lose. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about what these diagrams mean here in a second, but you just need to buy into the fact that if something loses energy, something has to gain that energy. Okay? I'll just put that down here. Now. Okay? Now, your internal energy of the system. So, it turns out that Consider, consider a system that's got, you know, let's say you've got a liter of water, okay? And if I were to ask you, well, what's the total energy contained in this system? If you were to take the movements of all these molecules and how fast they're moving, multiply it by their mass, divide, you know, put, take into account their position from each other, right? Because there's a, just like gravity pulls on things, you get, you've got this electrostatic protons pulling on electrons. If I asked you what the total energy of that system was, you would not be able to tell me because there's way too many things going on in that glass of water, right? There's things moving around, you can't see them, you can't measure them. It's an enormously complex question if you were to try to figure out what the energy is. But what you can tell me is if we change the energy of something, you can tell me where it started and where it ended up. Okay? So, if we have a system with some initial state of energy, okay, this is, just imagine this being a y-axis, okay? As you go up this axis, you increase in energy. If you have a system that's in an initial state, okay, and that system loses energy, it'll go down to a final state, just like a, a woman on top of the mountain starts off at the top and ends up at the bottom. Okay? If you lose that energy, that energy is lo being lost to the surroundings. Does that make sense? Start high, go low, that energy has to leave the system. Okay? Now, the change in energy... is going to be negative, and we'll, we'll talk about um, signs here in a second, okay? Your change in energy is negative. You're losing it. Losing. You're losing it to the surroundings. Now, the opposite can also be true. If you've got a system that starts off at a low state, and then it moves to a, a higher final state, so a woman that starts off at the bottom of the mountain goes up to the top of the mountain. You have to put energy into that system to get from that lower state to the higher state. Okay? <coughs> Your change in energy is going to be greater than zero. Okay? And you're going to be gaining energy. Okay? If you want to calculate your change in energy, all you have to do is take your final state, subtract it, subtract, subtract from that the energy of your initial state. Okay? Um, I guess we could do a, uh, let's do a, let's do a little sample problem here up here on top. Okay? If a system starts off with, if a system loses 100 joules of energy, okay, it ends up with a total energy of 50 joules. So, so if you start off with 100 joules and you end up with 50 joules, how much energy, what's your change in energy? It's negative 50. Well, you, you actually subtract 50 
50 joules from 100 joules from 50 joules, we would change the energy to the negative 50 joules. Okay? But if you're looking at a system, it's just the final minus the initial. Okay? So, if delta E is greater than zero, the system is gaining energy, you're going from a lower state to a higher state, okay? If delta E is less than zero, you're losing energy, you're going from a higher state to a lower state. It's just like potential energy in, in physics. The same thing applies to chemistry, okay? Now, the symbol for heat Don't ask me why this happens, is Q. Okay? When you see Q, you're talking about heat. And then the symbol for work is easier to memorize. The symbol for work is W. Okay? And just like for the total energy, the E, if Q is greater than zero, the system is gaining. If W is greater than zero, the system is gaining energy from work as well. Okay? So if Q is positive, the system's gaining heat. If, if W is positive, the system's gaining energy from the work that's being done on it. Okay? This is what you need to to write down here. So, for Q, if it's positive, the system gains heat. If Q is negative, the system loses heat. For W, okay, it means that if, if W is positive, work is being done on the system. It's gaining that energy from that work. If it's negative, the system is doing work on something else. Okay? Delta E, this is this is Q plus W. Did, did I say that? Your change in energy is equal to Q plus W. for the amount of heat plus the amount of work transferred. Okay, um, here's what I want to do. Let's, let's grab the clickers and I want to see, um, we're just going to do a kind of a little